Good morning, free spirit beaters. Oh, I have my sound on. Okay. So, how is everybody doing today? Welcome to your weekly series of Free Spirit Feeding with me, your host, Kristen Fagan. And um, today, I am coming from beautiful, overcast, Arizona. It's gorgeous. The, I was afraid I wouldn't have as much light in here, but looking at my face, there definitely seems to be enough light coming coming in through the window, so we should be good. Um, I'm wearing my black and orange earrings that we made last week. Um, you can see that video right here on the Southlux Company YouTube channel under the Free Spirit Beating with Kristen Fagan playlist if you want to see how to make those and I'm just all decked out in orange today I've got my orange headband on because I've got some crazy curly hair with this humidity and um, I'm also wearing my Vitality Kumi Hemo bracelet um, today so I'm just loving I'm just loving the fall and feeling all orangey today um, we're gonna work with the new Softlex Trio's Autumn Spice. We're gonna be designing with the Purple Amethyst and the Citrine wire. And um, so what I wanted to talk about a little bit, well, first off, let me just remind everyone that um, I'm here with Softlex Company and that we actually have a sale going on that ends today, the Fall Finding Sale. It's 20% off. All components and all crimp tubes and crimp covers and that even includes our um, components and our pendants and stuff on closeout so you can just see right on our homepage softlexcompany.com there's a big banner that um, talks about the fall finding sale if you click on that banner it'll take you to the whole category uh, you do not need a coupon code everything will be discounted once it's added to your cart so just add it to your cart and you'll see your discounted price all of our closeouts are 30% off and then you'll get an extra 20% off and if you need to stock up on crimps and crimp covers for the holiday for making your jewelry and making your projects now is a great time to grab those um, I know I'm always running out of crimps they definitely is one of those standard um, items and we may not have them on sale again before the holidays so that would be great to pick that up today so when I was looking through my stash today trying to figure out what I wanted to make my original idea was to work with our Austrian crystal square Dell line and they are on closeout um, like I said 30% off and then an extra 20% off today but it turns out that I actually had used them all um, but I do have a design here so I'm gonna show you guys that so I had to ch change that up thanks for sharing our website Softlex company so this is the agate and crystal set that's made with those um, Austrian crystal square dolls in the light sapphire color and our fire agate beads and it's strung on our extreme 24 karat gold soft flex beading wire and also has a matching toggle with the light sapphire um, crystals on the back and that's what's really fun about the square doll line is they we've got the square doll beads which are like spacer beads in four six and eight millimeter with matching toggles for um, one strand or three strand designs and there's also a bunch of charms in there that have the same crystal colors that match too. Here's the bracelet for that set and these are using large fire agate rounds from Softlex Company. You can find that in the gemstone section. Um, I actually have this design on our on our website so if you do want to see how to make it there's step-by-step -step instructions for that. It's called the crystal and agate set and you can find it at softlexcompany.com click on the school of design and then once you're in there you'll click on free project ideas and this will be under the necklace 
um, category. It may be under the bracelet category also, but that's where you can find that. So I had to change my idea and I ended up um, going through my stash of components and findings and I had an abundance of jump rings. So I decided to make work on a jump ring project with you guys today. Initially, I was gonna do some chain mail. I don't usually do chain mail, so I said, oh, let's try that. Um, but I quickly, I quickly realized on Friday that my patience was just not quite there for chain mail. So then I remembered that um, I have seen just jump rings strung uh, right on cord or leather, or I'm gonna use beading wire today, and used as a design component in that way. So that's what I ended up doing, and I think it turned out really fun. I have um, a few different ways that I'm gonna show you that today. Let's see. Yeah, so that was m way up my alley. It was simple and in its execution and it gives a lot of texture and it uses up this abundance of jump rings I seem to have lying around. I used open jump rings, um, which is fine. I just went around and closed them all. But if you have closed jump rings, all the better because then you don't have to worry about them opening up and you don't have to go through and actually close all your jump rings. Uh, so I'm gonna head and put you guys down here on my beading table and we'll get started. I didn't did I black out for a second there it seemed like my screen went down for a minute all right so let's talk about our supplies we've got here um, I've got copper jump rings in four millimeter and then I've got these lovely copper beads from Jesse James beads. They are about um, 16 to 18 millimeters in size. And I have two sizes of these beads here. They are called Cathedral Fire Polish Check Class Beads. And we do not sell the beads at Softlex Company, but you can find jump rings there. And you can find our beading wire. These, like I said, was jessejamesbeads.com. And I did locate on fusionbeads.com as well as on shipwreckbeads.com um, these cathedral fire polished check glass beads. This is like a purple color. And I thought it had um, copper on the sides, but when I was looking them up, they all said gold or silver. So this may actually be the gold, or this could be a, a possible, um, I've had these for a while, so maybe at one point they did make them in copper, little copper ends. But I'm pairing them with copper, because even if they happen to be the gold, I think they're sort of like a, a dusty gold, so I thought they looked, looked good with copper. And I'm gonna pair that with the purple, Actually, no, I'm gonna pair that one with the citrine. I'm gonna do the citrine color soft flex beading wire. For my tools, I have a flat nose plier, I have a chain nose plier, and this is just for um, helping me open and close my jump rings. So if you're working with closed jump rings to begin with, you actually don't, um, need both of these pliers for that part of it. And I'm using my magical crimper today. You can also use a regular crimping plier. I'll be using two by two millimeter crimp tubes from Softlex Company. And I have a few um, lobster claw clasps here. I have one in silver, I have one in gold, and then you could use one with copper to go with these. So let me get started. So the first thing you need to do if you're working with open jump rings is make sure that your jump rings are all 
closed. And if you've never opened or closed a jump ring before, uh, you're gonna grab with your chain nose pliers, grab with your other hand with your flat nose pliers, and you're just gonna twist. So if I wanted to open this jump ring, I would twist one plier away from me and one plier towards me, and then I would have an open jump ring just like that. And then to close it, you're gonna take it both sides and twist one plier back towards you and the other plier away from you. And you're just gonna kinda of wiggle and get that as tight as you can. And the reason why you open jump rings with a twist like this is you wanna keep that circle shape. And if you try and just take a jump ring and pry it open this way, you're gonna lose your circle. Let me see if I have any other ones in here. This guy looks open. Again, just one plier towards you, one plier away from you. Wiggle it till you get nice and closed. So I'm gonna go ahead and work off of the spool. So I'm just gonna take my clip off and give myself some wire, put my clip back on. And this is soft flex beading wire. It is, um, I'm using the medium 0.019 diameter. It's our all purpose size and it comes in over 20 colors. It's a stainless steel micro braided um, wire that is then colored and nylon coated so you're not gonna have any issues of your color fading, chipping, or anything of that sort happening to it. I'm gonna start with this little four millimeter cathedral bead. And then I'm just gonna string one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's do six jump rings, just like that. And then I'm gonna string the larger cathedral bead and one of these. Copper beads. Another one of the larger cathedral beads. And then I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five, six. So you see how that's sort of coming along? Isn't that a fun use of jump rings to create a little extra texture? And I like how they kind of dance around on the wire a little bit. So then I'll add another check glass bead. And another one of these. So where's everybody watching from today? Like I said, I'm here in Arizona and we're having a beautiful rainy day. Our, we went down about 20 degrees overnight. So it is gorgeous out. And I'm just doing six jump rings. Rainy Phoenix, Thomas says, isn't it beautiful? <laughs> Jody is from Wyoming. Welcome, Jody. Yeah, I had to actually shut off the air conditioning in the car today, which that hasn't happened in quite a while. <laughs> that was awesome. So I'm just gonna continue this pattern of check glass bead, copper bead, and then six jump rings.
I'm curious if anyone has used jump rings like this before as like spacer beads in this way. So there's my finished pattern. Now I'm just gonna hold it up and see. First I'm gonna put a bead stopper on it on one end so I don't drop it. Hold it up and see where I wanna cut it. Oh, and you'll need a pair of cutters. I don't think I said that earlier. I'm using my Softlex flush cutters. And you could put a bead stopper on both ends after you cut your wire, just like that, and that secures them so you don't uh, drop your beads as you're trying to decide where to end your necklace. That seems to be my downfall is where when I'm holding them up <laughs> is when I end up dropping the whole design. Okay. So now I'm gonna grab two of the Softlex copper crimp two by two millimeter crimp tubes. And I'm also cut myself a, um, a little extra piece of the citrine wire and I'll show you why in a moment. If you are using regular crimping pliers, you do not need the extra piece, but I'm gonna use my magical crimping pliers. So magical crimping pliers um, do like to have two wires running through the crimp to really get a good secure connection. So you just add your extra and you don't need a piece this long, it just happened to be what I had there so that you've got two wires running through it. Jody says, no, she has not used jump rings as a component before, but she will be trying. It's a great idea. Yeah, that's, I've seen it done before and I always thought, huh, what an, a neat way to quickly add a little texture and that design component, but I had yet to do it. So thank you guys for being here to give me a reason to give it a try. So once I have my crimp tube strung, and the reason I'm adding a crimp tube is I want to hold the beads in place on my necklace. Once I have my crimp tube on, I'm gonna slide it into the center of this tool. You'll see there's a notch on either side. When you close the tool, it makes a little circle so there's like a half circle on each, each side you want your crimp tube to fit right in the center there and you're gonna give it a good squeeze and when you take it out your crimp tube should have um, pinched little corners almost like a ravioli Then you're gonna turn it 90 degrees and place it back inside that notch you really need to make sure you get it right in the center of that notch. And then you give it another squeeze and then I'm just gonna twist. I'm keeping that tube in the notch and I'm just twisting, squeezing, twisting, squeezing. You go around like five or six times. And what that does is turn my tube into a nice little two millimeter bead. And then you cut off your excess wire from that extra piece, being careful not to cut your necklace wire. And that is gonna hold my beads on place on that side of the strand. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. String on my two by two millimeter crimp tube. I'm using the copper color. If you've never used Softlex company crimp tubes, I highly suggest giving them a try. And right now we've got them 20% off until the end of the day today. Um, because they are double the thickness of most on the market, they're seamless 
and they're just really superior quality. So before I crimp this part, I'm gonna take my necklace and put it in the shape that I want it to be. If you um, have it straight out and you crimp it really tight, you're not gonna be able to get the movement you're gonna want in the front of the necklace. So I'm just gonna bend it like that. Susie says, hi from Phoenix. Hi Susie, you're my neighbor. Isn't it beautiful in Phoenix today? It's so nice to have a rainy day after such a hot, hot months of summer. Okay, so now that I'm happy with my shape and where it's at, I'm gonna take my crimp tube and place it inside my magical crimping pliers, right in the center, give it a squeeze, turn it 90 degrees, put it back in the center, put another squeeze, and then just pump and squeeze a few more times. And that really helps to round it as well as work hard in the metal and help it cinch down into the nylon of the beading wire. And then you cut off your excess. And there's your design. I'll probably add the clasp later off the screen for this one because I don't have a copper clasp at my desk here. And that was using four millimeter copper jump rings, six of them in between the beads to get that texture. And then I'm just gonna leave the soft flex wire up the back. Soft flex wire feels really nice on your neck. It adds a little pop of color. That's what's fun about using the colored wire. You wanna see another example? I have another one that I was gonna do with the purple amethyst color and using silver jump rings. Susie says, yes it is. And beautiful, so, so beautiful out, that's for sure. So I've got here some four millimeter five millimeter and six millimeter silver colored jump rings. And I have another little grouping of Jesse James beads here. You could find beads like this um, off their, in their little kits or their, or their design strands. And this one, I was gonna put this guy in the middle have these two and then these two. And I'll probably do the large jump ring here on either side. The So I'll do the six millimeter on either side of here, the five millimeter here, and then the four millimeter up on the sides here. I do worry I'm gonna need something just a little smaller to go by the crimp. So let me see if I have a bead that I could put just on the end there. I have two little purple beads that I'll put at the end here and that'll help so that my crimp doesn't uh, slide around. And I'm gonna use the purple amethyst color. So all three of these colors are available in the new Softlex Company special collection kit called Autumn Spice that you can find on our homepage. It's got the citrine, it's got the red jasper, which is one of my favorites. Um, I almost use it as a neutral sometimes. And then it's got the purple amethyst. So I'm gonna work. Oh, actually I cut a, 
I cut myself a strand already. So here's a strand of purple amethyst. I cut um, 24 inches to play with. I'm going to put a bead stopper on one side so that I don't lose my beads in the process. And I'm going to start with this small purple round. And then I'm going to add one, two, four, five, six. Let's do seven. How many do I have here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Let's do eight of the little ones. So that's eight four millimeter. Then I'll string my next bead. And how many do I have of these? Okay, I've got 15 of those. So let's do seven of the five millimeter jump rings. And then my next bead and one, two, I'm going to do eight of those again. So I did eight, seven, eight, only because I only had enough to do seven of that one. And then we'll string our focal bead. And we'll do eight again. One, two of the largest. One, two, three, four. six millimeter jump ring. I'll do seven of the five millimeter. And we'll do eight of the four millimeter. String our last bead. So there you have it. And I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm just gonna add a crimp on either side. So I'm just gonna find the center of my wires. String one, two millimeter crimp tube. I need just a little bit of wire for my, just to give my crimp tube a little place your crimp right in the center of your crimping pliers, give it a squeeze. And I'll show you that it becomes a little pinched square. Turn it 90 degrees so it sits in there 90 degrees from where you had it the first time. And then you're going to twist and squeeze 
and twist and squeeze. And this, this gets easier with practice. This tool is not too difficult. The main goal is to make sure you get that crimp sitting right in the center of that notch because if your crimp goes off to the top or the bottom, it's gonna kinda smush it instead of giving it the nice round finish. And then cut off your excess wire. Make sure you don't cut your necklace wire. Take your bead stopper off the other side and we'll crimp again. Put in your little second wire. And again, you wanna make sure your necklace is able to create the shape you want it to before you crimp it. You don't wanna crimp it too tight that it can't turn up. It's okay to leave a little space between where your wire where your crimp is and your last bead. Pamela Jones says, hi. Hi, Pamela. Thanks for joining us today. Good to see you. How is your day going? I started mine with a warm, hot chai tea instead of my normal iced coffee because it's Super chilly here at 80 degrees in Phoenix, and I love it. I pretend that we've got a fall. <laughs> so there you have it. On this one, I do have a lobster claw class here, so I can show you how to add a class. <laughs> Thomas says, brr, I know, it's a chilly 80 degrees. <laughs> I'll show you guys how to add a clasp on the end. So I'm just gonna get two more crimp tubes and slide on my crimp, slide on the lobster claw clasp, and then you're gonna take your wire around your clasp and back through the crimp. Just like that. Place your crimp in the center of your crimping plier. Give it a squeeze. And go around. Trim off this excess. And then on the other side, I'm just gonna create a loop for my clasp to go into. So you'll just slide on your crimp tube, take your wire, go back through the crimp tube again, and you can decide how big you want your loop to be. Um, I want my wires to be somewhat parallel coming out of my crimp here, because if, if they're crisscrossed, it could get a little wonky, so I just wanna grab my wires make sure that they're parallel coming through my crimp. Give it a squeeze. Pamela says, going well, but I ran late for your show. Well, better late than never is what I say. I'm glad you made it. And once the show's over, it will be available on YouTube, on our SoftFlex Company channel to watch later. So you can go back and, and see where we started. D Seller says, hi from Rainy, BC, British Columbia, Canada, British Columbia, I'm sorry. Yeah, <laughs> Canada. So you're raining also, that is beautiful. Pamela Jones says, it's hot and sunny here in South Florida. And there you have your end piece with your clasp. 
So Pamela, if you missed the first design, I did copper colors with purple. These are called cathedral check glass beads and these copper beads are from Jesse James beads. And um, I used the four millimeter jump rings, copper jump rings as spacers here. And I strung it on the citrine. Denise. Oh, I was wondering what your first name was. Denise says, has anyone used Softlex with Kumi Himo? As a matter of fact, Denise, I am wearing this bracelet that I did with the round Kumi Himo disc. Um, and you can actually find this project on one of my Free Spirit beading um, videos. I think I did it two weeks ago. I used the two colors from the Trio's Vita Vitality set with little triangle, um, they're called tri-bead check beads in the center here. And one of the things I didn't show on the video that I'll show you here in, uh, is that I added I have a three millimeter crimp tube under here, and I went ahead and used some brown 24 gauge craft wire, and I just wire wrapped around that crimp tube to cover it. You can leave it open, but I did find that um, when you've got so many wires coming out of a crimp tube, and no matter how close you get it to cut, you know, there's still a little bit of um, leftover, and I just really wanted to kind of clean that up and make it so it's not scratchy at all on my wrist. And so I went ahead and wire wrapped it. Jody says, nice. Susie says, I will look for the video. Denise says, oh, pretty. Yeah, I think it was two weeks ago that I did it. If not, you'll find it in the Free Spirit Beating with Kristen Fagan um, playlist. And that is with the round. I've also done it with the square Kumihimo, but I haven't done a video for that yet. That will be, that's on my list of things to do. Um, and I'm not sure if we have a free project up for it at the moment. I do have it in the Softflex bracelet projects booklet. There are uh, a flat square Kumihimo project using Softflex wire in there. So I just had one more that I worked on. This one is, oh, Softlex is sharing my video for the Kumi Himo bracelet. Thank you, Softlex company. So I have one more that I worked on and this one used um, a Jesse James bead in the middle and it used four millimeter jump rings in between and it is strung on our Pro Econoflex. Pamela says, I'd love to see flat Kumihimo. Yeah, it's definitely on my list. I, um, do I have any examples out here? Let me see if I have any examples. I do have two that I can show you the designs on. This is the bracelet that is in the Softlex Beading Projects booklet, and that uses the flat square Kumihimo with um, bone and copper color Softlex wire, and then the turquoise little rondelles on the outside. And this one uses the same pattern, but I did it with the extreme uh, sterling silver, the 925 sterling silver, and just little sea beads on the outside. And the way they're finished is this one has a large three millimeter crimp tube coming out the back there, and then going around the clasp, the toggle. And this one, I must have used Oh, I know what I did. I used a heavier diameter. So this one uses the medium diameter. So I was able to get them all through one three millimeter crimp tube, but this one used the heavy um, extreme diameter. So I ended up actually splitting it at the end and using two crimp tubes and then into one. So it kind of 
goes out and then comes into one. Just because this was a bit heavier, I couldn't get them all through the one crimp tube. So though that I'll probably show this uh, this designer something similar on a video, on an upcoming video. We'll get that on my list. So this last one I did on, I don't know if you guys have ever seen our Pro Econoflex wire, but um, if you look at it on the spool, it is a 49 strand wire. This is a little bit more affordable than um, the Softlex Extreme 24 carat gold wire so I like to use this when I want that golden color and it actually has a little bit darker of a color uh, the 24 karat gold color is really beautiful actually I have this one here but it's um it's a finer truer gold and then the pro econoflex is a little bit brassier but sometimes I want that. I'm actually gonna um, show you guys, instead of using the Softlex wire up the back, you can use chain up the back and attach it to the Softlex, and, or this is Pro Econoflex, excuse me, but the Pro Econoflex wire. And in this case, since my chain was pretty brassy, I wanted to use more of a brassier wire and this is also a nice way if you only have some scraps of soft flex laying around and you want to use up your scraps um, you can create sort of a, a centerpiece on the soft flex and then attach it to chain so I'll show you here you'll need You'll need your crimps. So now I'm using the two by two millimeter gold filled crimp tube. One of the main difference between the Pro Econoflex and the Softlex is that it is made in China and Softlex wire is made in the USA. It is a, um, you know, a better quality product. But like I said, when it comes to the gold, I really like the Pro Econoflex um, option for a, that little brassier look and a more affordable gold wire. So I just took my wire, strung it through the end of the chain, and then back through my crimp tube. Give that a squeeze. And I'm using the um, 0.019 diameter in the Pro Econoflex also. And you know what? I may have to use my regular crimping pliers because, yeah, I do. I do need to use my regular crimping pliers. So you'll see, like, the Pro Econoflex definitely bends a lot more than our Softlex does. So our Softlex wire is a superior wire but it is a nice uh, option for affordability on the gold. And the reason I can't use my, my magical crimping pliers as well is that the magical crimping pliers were really formulated to work with soft flex beading wire. And since I'm using the Pro Econoflex, they're just made differently, they're manufactured differently, and it doesn't work quite as well. So I'm going to pull out my regular crimping pliers. Go ahead and string that back on there. I want to make sure to get that bend out of the way. And the way you use the regular crimping pliers is there's two notches on these pliers. There's a back notch and a forward notch. You'll see the back one sort of shaped like a, if I turn it this way, no, that way's probably better. It's got sort of a little um, C shape going the opposite direction. And then 
the top one is round. So the back one's called your crimper. You put your crimp in the back notch first. You give it a nice squeeze. And that's gonna create a divot in your crimp. You're gonna turn your crimp 90 degrees. I have my divot now facing out. You place it in the front, which is your rounder, and give it another squeeze. And then you just, in the rounder, go around a few more times. And again, you go around a couple more times to really shape your crimp tube down and work hard in the metal, as well as grab a little bit of that nylon in the wire so it makes it a little more secure. So there's my one connection on that side. I'll take off. And I had already added my clasp down at the, up at the back here. So I've just got a lobster claw clasp with jump rings that I added at the back of my chain. Slide on your crimp tube. Slide the wire at the bottom of your chain. Go back through the crimp tube. And then I'm just sliding my crimp tube closer to my last bead and then pulling on this wire. And I'm gonna look at my Look at my loop on this side and loop it on this side and make sure that I'm getting it a little closer and close in size. When I'm happy, I'm going to go ahead and put your crimp tube in your crimping pliers in that back notch. Give it a squeeze. It'll make that divot. Turn it 90 degrees. Squeeze it again, and then just round and squeeze in that rounder a few more times. Cut off your excess wire. And you're all set. So that is how you can use Softflex on your focal down here at the bottom, and then connect it to chain going up the back and again, I use those little jump rings in there as spacer beads. So here are the three projects, three examples of doing the same technique, just in a few different ways and colors. Oh, let me pull these down a little bit. Let me switch you guys back up towards me. Pamela says, very nice necklaces. Thank you. Softlex, those are very pretty. Thanks, Softlex company. Um, I hope you guys liked today's project. It was a fun one for me to do, and I'm glad I got to use up a bunch of my huge stash of jump rings I seem to have. And if you don't have jump rings and you wanna make a project similar using them as a design focal point, design component, excuse me, um, I would pick up the closed ones rather than the open ones so that you don't have to sit there and close them all. But if you're like me and you have an abundance of open ones, just just make sure you use your, your pliers, your chain nose and your flat nose to um, close them all up before you string them on and you're good to go. Um, come back and see me guys. I'm here every week on Mondays at 11 a.m. I try and decide what I'm gonna make on Friday. So usually on Fridays I will post a, um, like a schedule on YouTube. So you can always pop in 
um, over the weekend and see what it is I'm planning to do. I'd like to get a little ahead of that, but right now I'm just sort of at Friday. <laughs> I'm planning my, my, uh, my design for Monday. If you have any suggestions, I mean, I know you guys said you want to see some more Kumihimo. I will definitely get flat Kumihimo on my schedule. And if you have any other things that um, you're interested in and you'd like me to explore, uh, go ahead and leave them in the comments and I will do my best to get those on the schedule for you too. Hope you have a great week. Happy October. Um, oh, and if you are not subscribed to Softlux Company's YouTube channel, please subscribe. You'll get updates on when I do my scheduling. You'll get updates when I'm live. You'll also get updates when um, Sarah and James do their videos. And we just love to have you as a subscriber and you can see all the different tutorials we have for you. Have a great week. Thanks so much for watching.